I love when people watch me film. It's my favorite. It's one of my quirks. Embrace it. Hey. Let's get quirky. To be honest, I think that being quirky is getting easier. And I don't know if that's because I'm older now and I don't really care what people think as much as I did when I was in my teens, or if it's like the readily accessible personality tests that help us see and understand different parts of ourselves. I don't know. But allowing my quirks to show around people that I'm intimidated by is still, well, intimidating. Even if we think we are really vulnerable and comfortable with ourselves, there's always room for improvement and little steps to take. Or maybe it's totally opposite for you and you feel like you've never been able to be fully yourself. There's always room to grow, but as always, be patient with yourself. Be you. Sounds pretty easy, right? But is it? It can be especially hard if you're a people pleaser or if you go to others for confirmation to affirm who you are or what you like or what you're into. I'm the first to say that I love a good self-help book. I have plenty, but we need to be aware as to why we feel like we need countless opinions on happiness, a relationship expert to maintain healthy connections and a spiritual advisor to, to basically help us to confirm and define our religious beliefs. Not saying that those are wrong. They're not wrong to have and utilize. I have plenty of books and plenty of people in my life who fit in that category. I love when people watch me film. It's my favorite. It's one of my quirks. Embrace it. I've learned a great deal about life and myself through said self-help books and people in my life. But did I at times use that as a crutch? Yes, most definitely. Oftentimes we already know what it is that brings us happiness, what we define as, as fun, and how we find fulfillment. I'd say that nine times out of 10, things we like or do or are into are our quirks. However, sometimes we even convince ourselves that the things that other people like and say and do is what we must like and enjoy. In my case, I can be pretty convincing even to myself. I've talked before about how you know, growing up, I always tried to like fit into a group. I tried to fit the mold of a specific type of person. Whether I was trying to fit the stereotype of an athlete, <laughs> not an athlete, yogi, bookworm, music nerd, theater geek, so on and so forth. It never really worked. Even as an adult, I have tried a couple of different personalities, different types of people. And of course, in turn, um, I ignored little parts of me that make me me, all the quirks. And those little quirks, they make it to where I don't really perfectly fit a mold. For instance, I am a huge advocate for the low slash zero waste movement. After all, the negative environmental impact that the meat and dairy industry have on the planet is the reason why I looked into veganism to begin with. Now I've been vegan for almost four years. What? what? But there are a few things within this zero waste movement that didn't quite sit with my actual preferences. See, I convinced myself that I didn't like flowers. I love flowers. But because in the zero waste movement, it's kind of encouraged, it's advised to not have cut flowers, but to only have things so that you can grow. So having like cut flowers wasn't true to the movement. So it wasn't until Adam and I started dating and he bought me flowers and he realized that when he did do that, it made me really happy. Even though I originally told him, I don't like flowers, just, you know, buy me a plant. But really that's not true because potted plants, they kind of freak me out because as much as one day I would love to have a ton of plants that I keep alive and are just pretty and awesome, the responsibility of keeping them alive just, just freaks me out, overwhelms me. Too much commitment. Patchouli's doing well, by the way. Patchouli the dog. Most of you know that Patchouli's my puppy. That's a long-winded way to say don't lie to yourself because in the end, the truth will come out and you will have just lost out on time where something as simple as flowers could have brought you joy. Plus, stereotypes are dumb. Don't let what people, culture, or stereotypes stop you from letting what you truly enjoy in this life bring you happiness. Be brave and allow yourself to be the one that breaks the mold. Be a rebel, stand out, because I guarantee you, nobody fits the mold perfectly. People may pretend or they may seem like they fit, but not a single soul fits a mold perfectly. More people outside my window. Love it. Hey. If you make weird alien noises, if you dance every time you eat food, and if you have a super dry sense of humor that most people don't understand, well, let's 
Let, let's be friends because I just described myself. And I would love to meet more like-minded weirdos. Weirdos. I think we're all weirdos though. Some of us may show it publicly more than others, but we're all weird. And it's not like I'm perfect at this either, like showing my true colors all the time. Like I said, there are certain people that I could think of right now that I claim up around. I'm a work in progress. I try to be my true self around everyone, no matter what, but it's not always easy. But you know what? Most people don't care about your quirks because they have them too. Please do not cheat yourself out of the totally fun, awesome person that you are. I think our greatest strengths are what makes us different. I believe our different ways of thinking, interacting, and being is what we should focus most on, not least. Try thinking about your quirks right now. What makes you different? And as a fun little activity, think about what you're passionate about, what you love to do, and then add your little quirk to the mix. You probably could come up with something super new and fresh. Nothing is truly inventive unless it was first unknown. And that's what a quirk is, right? It's just something different, something unknown, something new. Just look at Marie Kondo. I'm not sure it's some people say Marie, some people say Marie, but whatever, condo. You know, like the KonMari method? I've done my whole house KonMari method and it's just, I love it. But let's be real here. This woman is an OCD neat freak. I listened to an interview. Yes, I listened to an interview about her. Like I said, I'm obsessed. It was mentioned that this was something that she actually struggled with. She was so obsessed with tidying that she would throw herself into a frenzy, trying to get it just right. But that amazing woman did not let that hold her down. She just let her quirk, and we can all agree, she is the cutest little quirky woman ever, become her passion and her career and livelihood. She's killing it. I mean, last night I was watching the Oscars. She was there, she was all gussied up. She looked amazing. She walked that red carpet all because she folds like an angel. She's a genius. So if there's one thing that you take away from all of this, it is that your quirk slash quirks is likely the most unique thing about you and the most important part of who you are. It's your contribution to the world and to hide it away would be depriving all of existence of unique beauty. So remember, there's no such thing as normal. We live in a world of quirks and because of that, weirdness and quirkiness cannot be measured on a sliding scale, okay? Nobody is more quirky, nobody is less quirky. We just all have different types of quirks and unique parts of our personality. And as much as the world does need your unique vision and perspective, you need it too. Being unapologetically yourself is the only true way to be happy. I guarantee that most everyone that you come in contact with wants you to be your unique and quirky self because in the end, it gives them the permission to do the same.